I've been very lucky in my um, career working in Buddhist um, art. I've been able to work as an Asian art curator, which has given me a great exposure to the broad field of Asian art. Um, since I've started working at the university, um, my interests have been much more channeled, I suppose, into not only Buddhist art history as it relates to my specialist field in Burma, but also to the role that Buddhist art plays in museums, how we display and interpret Buddhist art in the West, um, and our understanding and interpretation. Um, how do we communicate the richness of meaning of Buddhist art and culture within our, often within our museum settings, which is sometimes the first exposure people will have to this wonderful art form. And I think too, um, one of my you know, real interests is going back further and further into the history of Buddhism, uh, where some of the earliest visual culture emerged. Um, as we really, you know, the more we understand about Buddhist teachings, you know, the Buddhist teachings didn't really require um, us to have visual imagery associated with it, um, Buddhism in order to understand the teachings. Yet the teachings themselves are full of such rich visual imagery, um, wonderfully descriptive phrases. You know, wherever the Buddha goes, there are flowers falling from the heavens, you know, petals littering the ground, beautiful sunlight, music, dancing. Um, and it is from these teachings and the written texts that we see that this wonderfully rich Buddhist visual imagery emerge. And in a way, they're almost incidental to the teachings, but Buddhist culture is now just intimately entwined with such this fabulous repertoire of complex um, imagery um, that people really do rejoice in um, as part of their um, Buddhist uh, lives.